Good morning, everybody. Today is a food saving day. We have a bushel of <clears throat> corn, and we've got two half bushels of second tomatoes in the basement. So we're gonna be uh, cutting up and canning tomatoes, and we're gonna be shucking this corn, and I think we're gonna freeze it. We're gonna cut it off the cobs and freeze it. That's gonna be our plan for the day. All right, so check it out. We got our neighbor that's gonna fire up a smoker tomorrow, so we are gonna take one of our pork butts from last year and smoke it in his smoker. So that's exciting. Do we have to cook these first or something? We have to blanch them. them. You wanna get the big pot or your grandma's pot? Um, hold on, I'm not, I need the kitchen clean before we can even clean this. Yeah. All right, we're gonna start with tomatoes. We had to borrow lemon juice from our neighbor and they gave us some. Typically when people use lemon juice, they use like, you know, a quarter teaspoon maybe or something. But apparently when you're canning tomatoes, you need like two tablespoons per quart of lemon juice. And we're gonna probably can 10 or 15 quarts. So we're gonna use all their lemon juice. <laughs> they probably were expecting us to just use a little spritz, but we're gonna use it all. Get this camp stove ready. Kind of tricky to carry with one hand. Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I could just do it this way. There you go. Use the other hand. And I can talk to y'all. So we got this cannon stove. We use it to scald our, not scald, vacuum seal our chickens on butcher day. And it's useful for canning. Set it right up on the deck outside the kitchen door. So it's easy to work with. And that's what we're doing now. Getting ready. Lemon juice like we do. Yeah, I was just I just made a comment about that in the video. <laughs> like, I just bought like a gallon. Yeah. <laughs> that lemon jar is cute. Was that his and hers cutting boards? Yes. I did it. I got it all. This little canning scale gauge on top of the canner. You guys can? Oh, we just started this here. Rachel decided to pick it up. I kind of was pushing her, hoping that she would do it, I guess. I could do it too, but um, I wouldn't want to do something like that without her wanting to do it too, because she's good at that kind of stuff. All right. This doesn't need to be here. This can be, you know, over here. That's true. No plug for that. I just put it here because it was... And um, so we got a freezer. So th these two freezers are plugged into this outlet, and that outlet is separate from this breaker, this circuit. So like, we can put two freezers here and plug them into this outlet and we should be fine. So... All right, we got our third fridge in there. Fourth one's coming still. Gonna go right here. Go keep your guns in the safe. It's probably a good idea, but I often wonder, in an emergency, they don't do, uh, don't do too much good down here, locked up, do they? <laughs> All right, so we got our third freezer put in place. And when you move a freezer, you're supposed to let it sit still for a couple of hours before you um, plug it in. Let the Freon go where it's supposed to go or something like that. So we moved this guy yesterday. It's been sitting here overnight, but then we just jostled it around to get it in place here. So we're gonna let it sit for a couple hours before we plug it in. And then we're gonna take the meat out of this freezer 
which is a much older unit but it's all frosted up and frozen over and we're gonna transfer that over there and then let this guy thaw out and kind of hit the reset button and then we're gonna have an empty freezer which is kind of like our backup plan <laughs> we have another freezer coming so we'll have four total um, and we'll fill them up. But we want to make sure that we have the space in the freezers in case one of them were to crap out, right? We can get a generator to provide energy for them, but if the freezer itself stops working, we're kind of SOL. So that's why we're getting a fourth freezer. <laughs> You're going to wash them first, and then every one of them needs to get an X foot on the bottom because that's how you peel it. And they don't go in the hot water for that long? 30 seconds. And then we're going to half them? Mm -hmm. You may have to scoop out the seeds in the core. Oh, really? Mm hmm. All right, we got tomatoes in a screener. Strainer? I saw the strainer. The strainer. And then we're gonna dunk them in here, boil the water for 30 seconds, and then into the ice water for 10 seconds or something. I don't know. Shock them. And then we should be able to pull the. We cut these little X's into the bottom of each of these tomatoes. And. You ready? No, it's not boiling yet. Oh, it's not boiling yet. Okay. Okay, now we're ready. I think there's enough water in there. Oh yeah, look at that. Plenty of water. Close enough. Wow. Counting down. Almost there. And then they're gonna go into this sucker. Oh. You're doing the right thing, babe. All right, let's see if I can peel a tomato. Tomato. Whoa! Baby, you did so good. So now we put a tablespoon and a half into a pint and a half jar, right? And then we're filling up with the tomato halves. Up to, what's it, like one inch on that little green thing? Uh, half inch, which is one of these, is two of these. Each one's a quarter inch. That's all. Ooh, mashing. How many jars do you think we're gonna get? I don't know. Can you please go look at the directions on that screen and see how much headspace you can Yeah. Headspace, uh, one half inch. Headspace is the gap between the top of the food or liquid and the seal. So that's, that's like an inch and a half. So we have more to go here. like Jenga. Can you um, check the canner? Yeah. So here we're heating up this water. Oh, we gotta put you down. Looking for 180. 
We'll take the lid off and let that get to 180. Ooh, it looks good. I can't wait to have all these tomatoes in jams, in, car, in jams, in jars, cans, jars. It's called canning, but they're jars, right? What? These cook for a different amount of time than the diced ones do? Yeah, I'm still trying to find the answer to that. There's no recipes for diced. I think she just made it up. All right, that was half the tomatoes. <laughs> still got more work to do. This stuff is rocking. Oh yeah? Do a whole video on canning one day. So we gotta cut these and boil them. All right, we got the first. So the first 20 pounds of tomatoes, we got four bottles, jars. Yep, pint and a half jars. Pint and a half jars, and then we did the second 20 pounds of tomatoes. This is a lot of work <laughs> to cut and prep all these tomatoes. Um, so here, you notice we have a whole bunch of water in the bottom. So now we're trying to like get more of the water out with a, a hack that someone told us. All right, and then we're gonna have these guys here. These are diced, these are halves, and that should be it. And Rachel wants to do corn still, but I don't think no, that's... No, we're not doing I don't think that's happening today. <laughs> All right, there's round two. Round two of them tomatoes. Again, in the canner. We're gonna head to the Oh, yo, yo, yo. We don't have quite the huge garden. Hey, what are you guys doing? I think I have something for him. I don't have anything else for you. I've given you all the food and treats that you're going to get today. Well, maybe I'll give you some mealworms later. But I come out here, I'm coming out here to get, see what's left of our yellow squash. We got a couple of grow boxes. As you see, they're in the shade now. We don't get a whole lot of sun. Well, here's a yellow squash we can eat. There's three yellow squashes we can eat. They're itty bitty. But these plants are kind of dying because of the squash bugs that we did not really do a good job of, of stopping. So we got one squashy squash. This little guy here. Put it in my pocket. Let's see what else we got. Another one down here. Second squash. Weird looking, huh? And our third squash in here. Oh, well the whole plant just came out. So look at all them squash bugs. Look at all those bastards. They suck. Funny they don't go after the squash. The squash looks fine, but the plants that grew the squash, they're not so fine. So all you squash bugs. Go in here and die. Yes. Go into the water and die. Into the water, into the water with you. Bad bugs. <laughs> All right. So that's a lot of work, man. <laughs> I don't think we're gonna get to the corn today. No, that'll be 
project for another day for sure. So, we started that around lunchtime. I think around 12 o'clock we started washing tomatoes. And now it's 4.35, getting ready for dinner. So, hopefully that was a good uh, put together of what we did. And, um, you know, why do we do that? Well, you know, we don't grow a whole lot of stuff. We got a couple of squash here. We got some peppers that we'll get there. We got a few tomatoes ourselves, but we don't have a whole lot of, um, we don't have a whole lot of space and sunlight to grow garden food. We got chickens, right? We grow, we raise eggs, we got pigs back there, and we do the meat birds. We're doing turkeys. So don't peck my toe. We're doing turkey soon, um, but we can't grow plants, so we buy them locally. And we bought we bought those two bushels of tomatoes. They were second tomatoes, so they weren't show ready or grocery grocery shelf ready. Look at this guy! What are you? Don't you eat my? Don't you eat my? Get, get out of here! That's 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 for me. That's mine. That's my food. My food, not your food. No. No, bad chicken, bad chicken, bad chicken. Let me give these guys some mealworms so they leave me alone a little bit. Jeez, they're going nuts. Listen, you. Listen. That's not for you, okay? That's for me. Anyway, <laughs> so we support our local farmers and we buy their seconds when we need to make our canning supplies for the year. And that's what we that's what we did. So the corn's gonna be next. And I have to close up shop with these chickens are gonna eat my damn my zucchini, my squash. These guys are nuts. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and let us know what it is you like to preserve down below. It was a lot of work. <laughs> My back is sore from standing at the counter for so long, but uh, hopefully they'll be really good when we make uh, some chilies and soups with them with those Kansas tomatoes in December and January. I guess it would feel a little bit better if we grew everything ourselves, but we didn't. What are you gonna do? Maybe one day we will. All right, take care guys, bye.